What's up, everyone? This is Angelo coming at you with episode 234 of Spinning Thoughts. My special guest is John from Keep Flying, and this is not the first time that we've had Keep Flying on the podcast. The first time we did was back in episode 9, back when Spinning Thoughts was still in single-digit episode numbers, which is really crazy to think about. We were talking to bands back then in 2016, who were playing on the Four Chord Music Festival 3. And now Four Chords on, what is it, 8? So it is crazy. Here's the other thing, too. When we talked to Keep Flying in Episode 9 in 2016, that was the year that the band was born. So there is a lot that John and I reflect on. But as we dive into what the band's been up to the last six years, we are certainly going to talk about what they're doing right now. They just released a brand new EP called Revival. This is looking back at songs in their catalog, reimagining them, giving different twists to it. I'll tell you, it is creative as hell and something that you should absolutely check out. There's one new song on there as well. So we talk about all of that. But we can't talk to Keep Flying without talking about their insane stage presence. I don't know how they do it. Every time I talk to somebody about this band, the first thing that they say to me is, wow, that band just goes crazy on stage. I try to figure out what the secret recipe is, the secret sauce to Keep Flying just being nuts on stage. I talked to John about that, their upcoming shows with Less Than Jake, Bowling for Soup, and then we even dive into the visual aspect of the band. I'm always intrigued with what the band is doing with their music videos, especially their merch. It, they just do the coolest things for merch bundles, their vinyl, and everything in between. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you give this video a like. Make sure you're subscribed on whatever podcast platform you get your podcasts on. Subscribe on YouTube. We're on all social media at Spin Thoughts. Our website is thespinningthoughts.com. And we have premiere episodes every Thursday at midnight Eastern on Adobe Radio. Make sure you go and check out the other shows on Adobe Radio. Give them some love. We appreciate being part of the Adobe Radio family. So without any further delay, because this conversation with John, it goes. Uh, I told John before we started to record to be long-winded in his responses, and long-winded he did. So here we are. This is John from Keep Flying. I am so excited for my guest here in episode 234. We had them on the show all the way back in episode 9, then Dan Boyer, our Canadian contributor, talked to the band for episode 185. I think he caught up with them when they were playing in Canada. And now we're here again for episode 234. I am so stoked to talk to John from Keep Flying. John, how are you today? Happy to be here. Got a little <laughs> bit of a late start, as we talked about before we started the interview. But we're here in uh, Maine nice. right now, Portland, Maine. We, uh, we are on tonight. Today is day four uh, of this tour celebrating the release of our new record. And uh, <clears throat> so far, it's been uh, an absolute blast as always. And I think the response to the record has been decent. <laughs> decent. Well, I'm hoping that we can expand on that a little bit more because I am a huge fan of Keep Flying and I, I don't know if you could see behind me, John, but you know, I've got, I'm, I'm repping some of the keep flying stuff back there. I've, I've even got the coin. You got one of the orange ones. Oh, dude. Yes. Um, yes, I, I did. I actually, That's before fun. I dive into everything here, um, that orange pressing, um, I, so I have about 15 contributors that, that write for me here at spinning thoughts. And yeah. whenever you all went to release this. I, I think there was only 30 copies of that yeah. that were released online. I told every member of Spinning Thoughts, hey, you have got to go and try to log into this website whenever this is going to release. And whoever gets this, like I will Venmo you the money. Like I need this in my possession. So I, I rallied the troops. I had everybody on my team try to log in. I actually was the one who was able to get in first and snag the copy. Um, but it was one, like one of my proudest moments in, in my vinyl game in a long time. That and getting Joyride from Transit. Those have been like my two biggest memories. So, yeah, there it is. There she is back there. <laughs> Do you even have a copy of it? I have my own personal copy, yes. <laughs> but um, not every member of Keep Flying does. Wow. That's interesting. Some of the, 
do not have a copy of that record. So are, that that are you a vinyl person? Do you collect vinyl typically? I, I do. I have more journeyed into soundtracks and movie scores on vinyl than music than like bands or you know um but yes i still collect i also will always purchase every friend's record on vinyl anytime a band that like we've toured with or i'm i know or or from long island i i always pre-order the vinyl i I don't know how else i really can support monetarily when it comes to um merch because i don't really wear like uh, band shirts as much anymore but the vinyl i'll always buy so you got me on that you put out a record on you know so um that's exactly how i am i actually try to get vinyl for every band that i have on the show it's becoming a big problem because um, i have a lot of episodes now so but i i agree it's a good way to support bands um at any time they release something for sure agreed and, and also i don't know i think mm. I don't want to say it. I think it's a respect thing, but I do think it's a respect thing. Actually, when it comes to me and my peers, yeah, I know that I'm 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 very outspoken about this. Like, I think also subconsciously, when I purchase friends' records, it there isn't any sort of spitefulness. But like, I don't know. I I th- I think I wish the same came back for me and my music. And I think I always hope that by purchasing, I'm putting that uh, other friends, I'm putting that energy into the world and hoping that, man, I hope that when we put our record out, that all the homies pick up our record because it would really mean a lot to me. I picked up theirs. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Well, you're paying it forward and hopefully it does come back to you. No anger when people don't. I also understand (laughs) that never that a lot of people are, are broke and or it's too much, you know, too much shit going on right now. Yeah. So I do that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Put the energy out. You get the energy back. That, that's it. No doubt. No doubt. So look, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. We've got a lot to cover. And as you mentioned, on August the 12th, the band released Revival. This is a six song EP containing new compositions of old songs from the catalog. I was beyond stoked when I got the press release from Big Picture Media. Awesome friends here at Spinning Thoughts. Uh, Cool that you're working with them as well. But I got the press release announcing all of this, and I am looking forward to diving into some detailed questions about the release. But before we do that, uh, like you mentioned, the the reception's been decent. I don't know why you're saying decent. I feel like everybody's on board with this. I've been loving all the vibes from people on my side uh, in terms of members of Spinning Thoughts and everybody that I'm seeing on the internet. So dive in a little bit deeper on that. What's the reception been like? You just had the album release show, I believe, on Friday the 12th. So how's it been going? What's the reception been like? How are you feeling about this release? A very different kind of release for Keep Flying. So, as we expected, when we decided that we were going to go into the studio and do this, some people are like, this is awesome. And some people are like, I don't understand. And some people are in between. Some of the tracks, they're like, yo, that th- that one, though, dude, fashion statement, the rap version. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. Right, so... I think we knew that that was going to be the case. So, it, you know, it's um, that is not a shocker. But I think that we this record was supposed to come out months ago. Now we were waiting on the vinyl. Yeah, we pushed it to August so that we would definitely have the vinyl in stock. And here we are and the vinyl still not in stock yet. Oh. It, it is frustrating thing i know that you're probably familiar now with the vinyl production world it's everything's behind and Mm -hmm. i'm just another complaint into the uh, void (laughs) but uh you know i'm still waiting for those to arrive they're done they just haven't been shipped yet so it's just like you know frustrating anyways um i did not want to release in august because august is a very busy month for music because a lot of artists release new music for their fall tours and they announce their fall tours. So the internet is just riddled with too much news happening. Does this make sense? Oh yeah. So, uh, you know, I get, again, another thing that's just a 
kind of a little bit of a music industry behind the scenes kind of gimmick here. But um, yeah, August is a tough month. So I did. I, I felt like once we put all the posts up, I'm looking at them and I'm like, man, they're just falling flat. What's happening? Why is these aren't like picking up like the first single for the record fire sale picked up real fast in June. It's because June is a better month. It's a little bit more open of a month. So, you know, I, I'm I'm now, uh, it's the first weekend past the record coming out. And I'm coming up with ways to like re, re-push this essentially starting on Tuesday. Um, and I'm hoping to just, I think a lot of people that we know don't even know that the record came out yet. <laughs> wow. Which, which you had mentioned, Joy Transit's Joyride. Yeah, this was an issue that this is never. This has always been an issue, but this was an issue that they had with that record. When they had put that record out, they had a falling out between their management and their label at the time, and nobody promoted the record. So a year after the record was out, people were like talking about Transit's new record. A year later. It came out a year ago. Yeah. People didn't know they had a new record come come out. Which, fast forward, and the band is, you know, um, you know, stop being a band. But man, now, now, are you? I don't know if you can see the numbers on your. I, I manage the band, so I don't know if you can see the numbers on your end. But, but on the outside, uh, but like on the inside. Wait, 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 wait. You manage transit. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Holy fuck, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's fucking crazy. I mean, they're one of my favorite bands, but uh, that's a fun fact that I didn't know. Yeah. You, well, you know what? I, I normally don't say it, but the last couple of things that I've done for Keep Flying, trans has been brought up. Uh, not by me. Yeah. So I'm, this keeps getting brought up, man. That's people fucking really crazy. Love, man. Yeah. Yeah, the last couple of years of as a band, like I was helping them because they, like I said, they there was a lot of falling outs, a lot of the just discrepancies that they had with um with uh with people, and I wanted to help them, and I did through their final shows, and then I did through the unfortunate passing of Tim, and then uh, I'm still. Still now, I, I helped them receive royalties that were owed to them for many, many years. Only recently, only recently, we were able to uncover hidden monies, um, which I was very, very proud of to do for them. Because, uh, you know, Joe just had a kid. He's very quiet on the Internet. Yeah. But he, he's got he's got a child now and he's in Charlotte. Happy. Um, Tori's playing full time still with multiple bands. And he, he's doing a covers band thing with his now current girlfriend as well. A lot of stuff going on, you know. Um, but anyway, that record now, years later, oh, the numbers are streaming. And I'm like, oh, my God, this blew up years later. I'm hoping that we can do the same thing with uh, this new Keep Flying record where next week, because that a starting next week, but over the course of the rest of the year, figure out clever ways to kind of like get people to know that this was even a record that came out just so that hopefully they take a listen and maybe one of the tracks, if not more, they do latch on to and go, dude, this one, which we've now seen. I think as of yesterday, I did see a lot of people I know were starting to finally listen because I've been waiting for people to be like, yo, there's a rap song on this record. <laughs> yeah. And now, in the text, like, yo, there's a rap song on this record. And I'm like, I, I know. I I, I'm, <laughs> I I did the um so yeah, that, that just that kind of thing, you know. Just just the just the, we just need to get it in front of more eyes, in front of more ears. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully we can help with that endeavor here at Spinning Thoughts. Correct. Tell the world. Correct. Correct. And that's exactly what I told told Becky. She was like, Oh well. I said, oh, I want to do it as soon as humanly possible because I know that they have to go to post and then it has to, I don't even know. I'm like, they, they probably have a calendar where it's already full. I would rather not have this come out in October. I would yeah. like to have this, you know, to keep the momentum and the flow going that hopefully people go, oh, I didn't know they put out a record. Let me check it out. Oh, 
you know. Well, we're going to, like I said, we'll do our best to spread the good word. We are big fans. There's multiple people here at Spinning Thoughts. Hannah, Dan, Tyra, so many. Jesse, who wrote the review for you all last week. Everybody can go check out Jesse's review on our website, thespinningthoughts.com. A great review, right, John? It was a great review. You made me (laughs) put it in the group chat. Everybody read it. Got a lot of the thumbs up emoji and the heart emoji, which is a lot for keep flying there's a lot of times i put info in there and it's met with silence so So, john i want to dive a little bit deeper into this um and and this might be a simple question but you know i'm really curious because i love when bands go and look at their previous work and try to redo it reimagine there's so many different words that people use to explain that process but I, i am curious why why is Keep Flying doing this? Why did Keep Flying want to go and do this kind of approach? Like you mentioned, you know, there it seems like there could have been some risk involved with this, right? Like this is a completely different um, output for the band. Uh, so why why did Keep Flying want to approach this release with Revival? Um, we've always wanted to do this. And we've jammed sometimes, like changing it up. Um, but the biggest reason, and, and actually I noticed some people started kind of figuring that out, but, um, biggest reason is that survival was a record that came out in December, 2020 during COVID after we did the same thing with that record, where we kept pushing it off, hoping COVID was going away, not knowing that it just wasn't going to ever yeah um and because of that we felt that we that record though it did well we thought that that record also got the the covid wash that a lot of records got where they came out and and people didn't either never knew or just didn't get around to it and so those songs on that record we love and we're like we feel like we don't want to be done pushing those songs that we think are the best songs we've ever written. And that is where revival came from. It is, it is in fact, a, a companion piece to that record survival revival. There's a, I mean, that is the clear like connector right there. The titles of the records and half the tracks from revival are survival songs. It was going to be the whole record, but we thought that is a little corny why don't we pull some of the other songs from the other records? Hence, Candy Came Forest 2 and Live Together, Die Alone. Um, and then same reason, the reason Clarity is on there is because we also were like, well, maybe we can use this opportunity to get at least one new song in there, something completely different, even though it was done in, in a genre that is also new for us. Um and that, and that's and that's the record. That's how the record came to be, and that's why we wanted to do it. If we do a new version of Fire Sale, we get to keep talking about Fire Sale. We probably won't be able to play it like this live unless we have the means and the rehearsal space to do so, which we do plan on doing at the what will be officially announced as the actual release show of this record which is december 31st uh our next real home show on long island is going to be like the actual release where we play the whole record front to back in that style in those styles with that instrumentation and then also a regular set um so yeah um that was uh that was kind of the uh the inspiration behind it was let's let's focus those songs just a little bit longer so that we can feel when our next record comes out, which is now done. Um, we feel good about have it, how how much time we spent on survival and those songs. I'm glad that Keep Flying went this route and continue to give life to these songs and to previous songs from the catalog because I agree. Um, you know, right now being a band and, and releasing music and all the moving pieces, whether it's vinyl, merch, um, just getting the word out there, um, knowing when and how to be able to support it on tour um, with still so much uncertainty. Uh, it is really nice to to see the life of survival move into revival. Um, and, and I personally love all six songs that are on the track. It's just a, a new 
fresh breath of air. And uh, I, I implore everybody to go and check it out, whether you've heard of Keep Flying before or not, and then listen to the rest of the discography from the band. Uh, John, you mentioned a little bit about the different instrumentation on yep. Revival. I am so curious on how you all as a band came up with these ideas for this instrumentation. Like, how did you come about reimagining these, thinking of different instruments to come in, and maybe even the most challenging part, I don't know if it is or not, Would how did you find people to play these instruments and to bring all this together? It seems like there's so much involved with this. A am I right, or is it more simple than what I'm making it out to be? No, you're correct. I will say... We did, fortunately for us, get the opportunity to jam a bit uh, these new versions out so before we went to the studio. We thought we were going to go in the studio and, and write them there. We ended up being able to work on stuff and record, you know, like on a cell phone, like just crappy audio. Um, but it was that was what was able to push forward the you know, the forward thinking of what kind of instruments we're going to use on these tracks. As far as, an, uh, you know, another fortunate thing for us, actually, a little bit backwards, we already were friends with the people that play a lot of these instruments. And because we're friends with them, that was a big influence on who we were going to have record on the record. Because we're, we're like, well, this friend of ours, our friend Ian, for instance, he plays cello. We love him. He's played live with us before for fun. We should definitely have him on this record. Oh, let's keep that in mind when we're writing this record. Oh, he's now on three of the six songs of the record. Ah, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, our friend Sam plays sousaphone in Snack Time out of Philly, a brass band. We're going to need tuba on this record. <laughs> How do we make that work? How are we going to squeeze tuba in here? I don't know. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. We're going to do a, <laughs> a country Americana Mumford and Son style song, and we're going to have tuba all over it, all over it, because it's going to work, and it, and it works. You know what I mean? Um, so it was actually in reverse. We were, we were, we were, how we get the homies on the tracks? How do we get the homies on the tracks? And that was it. The flute is always the hardest. Flute is hard. <laughs> is it? <laughs> flute is hard, but it was the same way with survival. Doing surviving the night, I was like, all right, we love our friend Morgan. We want the flute. I don't, where do you put flute on a record? I, I don't know. In punk rock, I don't know. There's always a way. So, oh, you know, at the end of the record ends with a lot of instruments. Let's get the flute in there. It was the same thing with, uh, with this record we we're like all right live together die alone it's more of like a campfire version it's more of like a, all these homies hanging out background noise party kind of soft vibe i think we can make the flute work on this track and it, and it works you know and there's a little bridge right before the essentially final chorus outro where we were like you know on the on the walkabout version it's a sample it's a lost John Locke sample um, from the ep from from an episode of Lost. Um, I think it's from the Walkabout episode. Actually, it's titled Walkabout, which is where the name of that record came from. Um, I think uh, we we were like, man, we're not going to use a sample here, which means that part's going to be very open, and that is one of my favorite parts of the record because we wrote this new kind of streetlight manifesto-y horn part that is multiple horn parts weaving in and out of each other, multiple separate harmonies. And um, that's my favorite part of the record, that like 15-second clip before the vo vocals come back in. Um, because of the flute and the, and the trombone, uh, and the Barry sax and the tenor sax and the different horn lines happening because we ne we don't do that very often in our music so we don't really have the uh, quiet space to usually pull that off so that was really fun um, yeah I you know that I think also the there's a there's a solo in they never lie down track five where it's this tenor and the cello harmonizing together and that's something I've never thought be a thing and um and it's so pretty it is 
my relatives are like, man, this, this song, <laughs> when it goes to the solo, because I don't think some of them knew it was a cello harmonizing. I'm like, oh, it's actually cello and tenor. Oh, my God, that's that's so that's such a good idea. I was like, yeah, it just kind of happened in the studio, you know? Um, I, feel, I feel like there's so many opportunities um, when you approach music like this, uh, the way that Keep Flying does in general, I think, and even specifically when it comes to revival with just kind of playing around with the sounds. All of you are, are so talented in, in many different ways, and um, I, I really think that revival just showcases that in such a vibrant uh, different way and for anybody who follows the band I just think that it is such a cool experience to go and listen to this from start to finish track one through six um, I do want to shift slightly though John because um, the album cover um, is gorgeous um, and, yeah. and and keep flying is a visual band I would say yeah. whether you are on stage going crazy or it's the merch that we're going to talk about here in a second yep. or you know when it comes to just like even like your tour gra or your um like the uh tour graphics and everything just they're beautiful like it, it is a consistent beautiful experience to look at things visually would keep flying so talk to me about the album cover for revival what, what was the band going for with this visual where was the photo taken because I it, I'm assuming it is a real photo, uh, maybe with some graphic design elements. And who was involved in its creation? So Jesse Gonzalez, our red hat, who does most of the band's photography and most of the band's music videos. He took that photo, which is a, actually it's a wider photo um, in Colorado while he was on vacation shooting photo work, doing photo work, um, he had given us a couple different options for artwork. We wanted to attempt to, same kind of thing, survival, revival. Survival had drawn artwork by our guy, Chris, who does a lot of the band's art and a very big reason why I still like doing this is because me and Chris get to work on art together. Um, as you said, it is a lot of visual with Keep Flying. I said, just this is important for me. I think bad art does such a huge disservice to, to musicians. The art is bad. People like just don't even take it seriously. Some people, some people move right on like, ah, that looks crap. Uh, why would I listen to that? Um, so we wanted to try to recreate the survival art in actual photo. And I asked Jesse, did you happen to get any mountainous photos, rivery photos while you were in Colorado? And he did send over like, I think there were three or four final photos that we got to choose from. And we felt this one encapsulated it the best because it was a mountain that teared off into a river with a mountain on the other side. And on the back cover of the record, which is the left half of this photo, there's actually like a trail of people walking through. We put, we did put a wash on it, the, the, the coloring. Jesse edited it out um, to make it more, you know, lavender, violet, and soft because the, a lot of the songs on the record are soft. Um, but my favorite part is actually the back cover where the back cover of survival has wolves drawn the back cover of revival has people walking through nature that you don't really notice unless you're looking at it. I don't think a lot of people are really going to see it until they have the record in their hand and they're looking at the back cover and they're, Oh, there's people there. Um, and he just happened to snap that photo while there was, either a family or a group, a group of, of friends hiking uh, through this uh, through this mountain. And I, that's my favorite part of the artwork. Um, but yeah, we were trying to, just like the name suggests, we, we were trying to uh, piggyback off of the survival artwork to kind of really make them companion pieces. And I think when I look at the two artworks next to each other, when I have the two vinyl in my hand holding them, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, this worked. This is cool. I'm glad we did this. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. That's so, the answer. So keeping on with the visual aspect of the band, um, 
like I said, the one of my favorite things about Keep Flying it, are, are just the ways that you approach the visual vi, visual aspect of things, um, whether it's different vinyl pressings, the flags, uh, like that the the survival flag, uh, fucking gorgeous, um, coffee mugs, matches. Uh, merch bundles. The, your band really nails the merch game. Uh, talk to me about how you all go about that process and coming up with these ideas. Because it really, you you take it and ele- merch and you elevate it again with like these really cool merch bundles that that are like synonymous with the theme of of the record, especially when it comes to like survival and revival. So, how do you all yeah. approach that? What what's the importance there? Um, transparently. Uh, I just do all of it with our artist, and then I just post it in the group chat and say, "Are you guys good with this?" They're used, to, as I said actually earlier in this interview. A lot of times the group chat will go dead, <laughs> but pertinent info in there, or even worse, time timely things I need an answer on in a timely fashion. So the way. any healthy business we've kind of talked out a lot of a lot of ways to uh make sure that we are as um efficient as possible and we have very fortunately for both me and our artist who does most of our artwork gotten to a great place where the band just trusts us to get it done without needing to see the pieces before they're finalized, which means we're able to work faster because now I don't have to wait three days when, do you guys approve this? It's just, I know that I have the respect that it's going to be good. I promise. Just trust me. So I have the trust, which is nice. Um, As far as design work goes about 80% of the time, our friend, Chris, he's just a genius. And he goes, I have something. Give me a, <laughs> and he'll send it back and I'll go, Chris, I have no edits. It is perfect. Wow. Send me, send the file. 20% of the time we go back and forth on something. And with also within that 20%, I already have a vision in my head of like, this is what I'm thinking. Items wise, as far as the like unique items, a lot of times I do come up with things that relate and make sense and make the theme whether it be on the internet with bundles like you said or when we're on the road how do i have this be cohesive you know what if i do this this and this i'm gonna get these two things because that's gonna tie those three together i do like trying to come up with cohesive lines because it i think again when people see that they're they recognize it that yours they might hate our band but they recognize man you're that looks good you yeah. did a good visual i don't like your music but man the, <laughs> which is fine that's still a compliment to me because yeah. like you said it for you it's important right for me it's important for others maybe not but i think overall visual is very important artwork is very important um the other two culprits to the unique items game is Ricky, our trombone player. He also does merch for a living for other artists and venues. So he gets to see a lot of bands and what they're doing. So he gets inspo there. And then Matt Burns, who is our, um, uh, not yet. Matt Burns, who is our, um, our rep at both smart punk and AKT which is the merch company that we're currently printing with. He, same thing. He deals with a lot of clients. So he sees like, hey, just so you know, this company just started using these blanks. Check them out. What do you think? I'll be like, ah. And sometimes he sends something over that I'm like, dude, that is an awesome item. I want to print on that. I want to do that. How much are they per unit? How can we get that down? How many do we need to make in order to make it within our price range so that we're not you know, eating shit. Yeah. Um, and, and he, and so, and me and him, sadly for him, we also talk almost every day. <laughs> every day he's like, Oh, when's the call coming? And there it is. You know what I mean? Uh, I love it. Um, it is so cool to kind of get this, um, this insight from bands, especially a band like keep flying that really, like you mentioned, it, it means something to you. It's important to you and, and the other guys in the band. Um, and I think it reflects so nicely 
whether it's again the the graphics the merch everything in between something else that keep flying is it just insanely known for um and i really mean this like literally every time i talk to somebody about keep flying the first thing that comes out of their mouth is how absolute insane and crazy the band goes live on stage i mean truly it's the first thing and i don't know i used to play in bands i used to play in a ska band and um if if I got compliments that the first thing out of their mouth was, yo, you guys could just go wild on stage. Like to me, that's like pinnacle uh, compliment because uh, that's what it's all about. It's the live show in my view. Talk yes. to me about how Keep Flying approaches live music and how do you maintain that kind of consistent energy? Like it's so consistent. I don't know how you do it. Talk to me about that. It is hard. As we get older, <laughs> it is getting harder, which I think is normal. Yeah. Um, no shame in that, but we still just are like, well, let's keep pushing the limit. We are reaching a little bit of a, of a ceiling. Chuck blew his knee out. I blew my knee out. Oh, wow. Uh, I blew my neck out. Um, things have been happening, but this is what happens when you get older. And here I am being scolded by loved ones for still being on stage when they see the clips get posted on Instagram story. You said you weren't going to headbang anymore because of the nerve issue. And here you are. What are you doing? Um, we are all entertainers before Keep Flying. We were all the high energy members of our previous bands. So when we came together, it naturally happened. Plus, we get each other psyched up on stage right before we start and throughout the set when i have a winded moment and i see rick or chuck doing something crazy it gets me back <laughs> and so it's a lot of as another thing that we talked about before when we were at the beginning of this uh conversation shared energy we bounce the energy off each other and fortunately for us when we play the intimate shows, which are the, the shows that are the most important to us, i.e. the Roboto Project in Pittsburgh, yeah. it's all that when we're getting the energy back from the 67 people that are in there, it helps us keep going harder. So trading energy back and forth with the actual crowd is also a big part of how we're able to stay fueled um, why do we do it that way? Well, we've watched a lot of bands we love become very stagnant on stage, either by, by sadly, age, they can't, or by choice, which is, again, to each their own. And, you know, I don't know, having to, having to watch that happen, it's like, man, I don't want, imagine, I think to myself, imagine someone who likes our band, coming to a show and we're just standing there now we're just playing the songs i promise you they'll sound better Music <laughs> musically they will be better because we do not hit it perfect when we're doing that p90x program on stage um which is another part of 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 this which is we do accept that we're going to lose a little bit of the musical integrity and we're willing to sacrifice an amount not much but a small amount if it means that our stage show stuck out let's say at a festival if it means at a festival that some people leave there going that band who played earlier in the day because they're smaller and newer had one of the crazier sets of the day that was worth losing the musical integrity 10 to 15 percent Oh, I totally agree with that. And um, others I, wouldn't. Other artists would not. They they would be very upset by not being. No, I want to be spot on on stage. It's important that people get to hear these songs the way they were intended. Well, as you mentioned before this question, our band was intended to be received live with that show. Yeah. Songs are written in that way. We're in the studio sometimes thinking, oh, my God, I can't wait to play this part live because I'm going to do this. We're thinking about how it's going to play out live when we're writing. 
I think that that is a big showcase and reason why we are the way that we are. Yeah, and I think punk rock and you know any kind of genre that's um, closely related. I think that there is that room for that for the live show to just go crazy, and um, it's just one of my favorite things about Keep Flying. And like I said, every time I talk to somebody about your band, the first thing they say is just how nuts you all are on stage. And I don't know. To me, that's a huge sign of respect. Um, you mentioned Everyone Pittsburgh. On cocaine. We get often asked if we're on cocaine. Before. Oh my god. Not just by like jokers, by like people that love us as people. Yep. <laughs> you guys all do cocaine. You must. Because what you're doing up there can't be real. And we're like, no, no. Some of the guys are, are, are users of drugs, but no one does cocaine in this band, you know? Yep. Uh, that's just so, ad- that's adrenaline of live punk rock music. Um, us, us getting excited. We just get excited. And, and also, like I said, our songs were written knowing they're going to be played live. We play every song that we have ever written live. I think a lot of bands also can't say that. That is a great fact about Keep Flying. We at all times have the whole catalog rehearsed. Um, so that way we can bust out whatever songs. There are no songs that we can't play, which most artists, it's not that way. Oh, you're so I, you're so right on that. I know a band that I love that is also like that is Saves the Day. I know that they at all times are rehearsed because Chris will just change his set list every show. And by the end of a tour, you're going, I know Warp Tour 2016, they played like 101 songs throughout the tour. Wow. They just... And I'm thinking to myself, man, that is really cool as a fan who was fortunately on the tour working. I was able to go see their set and I'm like, I don't know what they're going to play today, but I'm going to get something different today. And that's really fortunate because most times, per the norm, bands, you know, they're on tracks and, and they have and they're on lights or whatever and they have the same set list. And this is the set list of the tour. That's what you get. Keep flying. We're able to, someone asked us before a set, hey, can you play Jamestown, we're able to be like, you know, we actually can squeeze that in. We'll figure it out. We're going to cut this song and throw that in there. I don't know. To me, that's cool. Um, Keep Flying is a, is a band of the people. I mean, and I mean that in a joke, but also in yes. all seriousness. I mean, if you really think about it, like you are a band of the people from the live show to the merchandise to even being that flexible to have the entire discography ready to go at any moment's notice. Yes. We, we have played multiple sets where it's been fully crowd picked the whole set which an artist like jeff rosenstock has done as well which i think is really cool i think it's fun what do you mean you're going to take a fishbowl on stage and just pull songs out <laughs> and play was written on the paper how can you do that how oh you're just a good musician who knows the whole catalog plus random covers okay that's cool to me that that's cool and once again worth losing 10 to 12 percent of the music integrity as far as the actual song itself if you're able to just bust out songs that are even only half rehearsed it's like oh well screw it let's just do it so john you know keep flying there's a lot of things coming up in august september you're going to be on this run with less than jake and bowling for soup Love Less Than Jake. Uh, Jarrett actually has a show on Adobe Radio, so that's an Adobe Radio uh, friend right then and there. Um, And really excited for everything that the band has coming up in terms of live music. Now, I am under the impression that coming up here very soon on August the 30th, Keep Flying is going to be right around the Pittsburgh area in a really intimate setting. Can you talk to me about that briefly? So, yeah, as you know, um, we, we normally play four court every year, uh, and we still, um, have some people that are thinking that we're playing that. But when we got that phone call from Bowling for Soup, Less Than Jake about doing that tour, it actually is unfortunately the same time frame as four court and, uh, Rishi, who is the owner of the festival, who's our, our friend, uh, he was one of the first calls we made to make sure that, Hey, please don't be upset. Um, but this tour, and he's like, dude. I am not that I'm fired up for you. And which is the answer I was hoping he was going to say, but you got to, you know, I had to cancel something uh, in order to make this work. So unfortunately we're not on four chord this year. We'll be back next year. But because of that, I was like, how can I 
figure out a way to squeeze something in Pittsburgh in. Roboto's calendar was full for the summer, I believe, because we had to book this tour kind of last minute. Um, but we we heard about a spot in Beaver Falls, <laughs> that, which I believe is about a that thirty minutes northwest of Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's an a, easy drive up three seventy six. Simple, simple. Studios, uh, I can't remember the num- numbers now. Seven twenty four might be it. Uh, it's a small studio space where they do a lot of rehearsals and live streams for artists. That has been diving into trying shows. Now it is a 50 capacity room. It is small. We have six guys in our band. <laughs> so go to the other two bands that are playing. I do think this is going to be one that I will never forget. It is, on, it is on a Tuesday, which is a tough day for some people, but it's the end of summer. And if you're looking for something to do and you were thinking we were playing four court and you're just finding out now that we're not, that is the Pittsburgh show for us for the summer. That's going to be, I have no idea. It will be chaos. And if you like chaos, it's for you. If you don't, it is not. <laughs> we, we will be back to the Pittsburgh area one final time in December um, this year as well. So if you can't make Beaver Falls, there is a weekend show that we have in December that is not announced yet, but it will be, I think, in, in September. Um, that we're that as always we will be very excited for because Pittsburgh for us has become one of our favorite and best markets. Yeah. Thankfully to all the support we've gotten from the friends who like you yourself who live in Pittsburgh, we have been able to grow our band in Pittsburgh, a place that none of us live, that we claim at this point is almost just as home as the east side of the state. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that there is nobody in your band from Pittsburgh just because of how close you all are with Rishi, Eternal Boy, Four Chord. Your, just your presence here when you're on stage here, it feels like a hometown show, at least some, from, from my perspective. Some, I think sometimes we forget. <laughs> when we, we look forward to Pittsburgh always, it has been from the beginning such a warm place where we are received well, where every show we've supported has rocked and every show we've headlined has rocked. There's never one time been a dud. Cannot say that about most cities. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Definitely encourage everybody to go check out that show on August the 30th out in Beaver Falls. I'll put some information down in the show notes and link the uh, venue for anybody who is interested. Go and check that out. And John, as we round out our conversation here, I feel like I could talk to you for hours and hours. You provide such great insight to everything keep flying related. Uh, but I, f- I figured this might be a good way to round out our conversation, bring it full circle. As I mentioned at the beginning of us talking today, um, I first had keep flying on the show for episode nine. And this is currently episode 234. We were still in single digits <laughs> when we talked to keep flying that was in November 2016 now the whole reason why we t- and I talked to Henry uh, for that interview the whole reason why we even talked to keep flying back then was first of all spinning thoughts was within our first month ish of being a thing we weren't on Adobe radio yet and I hit up Rishi and I who is a good friend uh, a mutual friend of ours uh, and I, I reached out to Rishi and I said hey dude um, I really want to help promote Four Chord, and I really want to just be involved somehow. Is there a way that you can help me interview as many of the bands that are playing on? It was Four Chord 3 back then. Um, I asked him, I was like, can I get some of these bands? And he he wasn't shy about it. I mean, he, I think over a two-week period, I may have interviewed almost every single band that was on that particular lineup, minus Mayday Parade. Uh, who's still a band that I haven't gotten to talk to yet. Uh, we'll f- we'll fix that one here in the future. But um, what I really want to talk to you about, John, is when I had Henry on, uh, some of the topics that we talked about, you know, he was talking about the transition from Survey Says and into Keep Flying. And it's just so wild now that here we are six years later to see how the band has evolved and really grown. Um, I want to challenge you right now to just uh, kind of give me a little bit of reflection. Look back on the last six years of keep flying from 2016 now to 2022 and you know what's it been like for you is it what you were hoping for and where do you see this going from here when henry came to my house in 2016 
before Keep Flying was a thought, telling me that once again, all of the members of his band had quit. And very upset about wanting to be the, the ska guy. This is honest. Wanting to be the guy who was in the younger generation that was out there doing it, which I give Henry and now Ricky, as it, which we'll get to, a lot of credit for the amount of work they did with their old band. They, they were out there 250 days a year. They were doing as much as they could. They were getting the support tours. They were out with Big D. They were out with Goldfinger. They did Real Big Fish stuff. Like They were doing all the things. I'm not sure how much more you could have done with that. When I had a combo with him about like, because we were just friends at the time. Um, when I had a combo with him about, why don't you try something different? Why don't you take the ska out of the songs that of these new demos that you have? Why don't you just try something else? You did this. It's cool. But like, I don't know, try something else, which from my previous bands, that's what my previous bands had done. My previous bands were not really, I mean, there was ska there, but not, you know, we were both, both of my old bands were really deviating from, from that, trying to do something very different. Uh, one of which was heavy and one of which was pop punk, you know, um, which is where I fall somewhere in between those things. Um, when he sent me the demos back, the new versions, where it was more straight punk songs, I said, man, this is it. Dude, these are the songs. This is the way that that song should sound. This is cool. And people who don't like your old band are going to like this. Promise. They're going to like this more. I bet there's more, more of a window for more people to, to feel... I can get into this. We'll still use the horns. The horns are the cheat code, as we say. We'll keep the horn. That gives us something different, just like Yellow Card has a violin, just like yeah. Motion City Soundtrack has the keyboards, just like Cursive has a Barry Sachs sometimes and a cello. This is your cheat code. You got something different on stage that makes you have something else, right? Which we do get a lot of people at shows who have no idea about music that has horns in it and they go you guys have horns in your music that's crazy i've never heard of that we have a lot of people like that <laughs> yeah which is cool when he asked me would you record the horns on this record with my brother i said yeah of course when i was in the studio recording these songs and realized wait a minute i want to do this i want to be in a band with this guy and these other people who i didn't really know at all only real only henry um, no, I did not know how far it would go because I straight up said, I'm going to do this. I, I can only contribute as much as I can contribute. I have to work. I have this. I'm 30. I, you know, I'll be 30. I, I can't do that. Like, you know, I, because in my mind, it was not possible. It was an impossible thought that I could go back to playing more full time in a band like that. How can I do that? And fast forward. Some of the guys in our band who are still here. Well, it's actually, it's just Peter. But Peter is the only other person who's been there from the beginning. Uh, from mo almost the beginning. He was no one to me. Now he's one of my best friends. Ricky, who was in Henry's old band, who I was friends with before Henry, from his local bands in Buffalo, who would open up for my first touring band, is now in Keep Flying. And it, for me, it was like, wow, this came full circle. I actually, I have been playing. Rick and I have been playing together on bills with all of the bands we've ever been in. And now we're in a band together. Um, Dustin, who is our newest member, who is in a band called With The Punches, same thing. I have been friends with him through his pop punk, fast punk band With The Punches for years prior to um to keep flying forming and fast forward him being a few years older than me still wanting to be someone who plays in a band more full-time than not feels good 
feels good to play in a band with people who want to be here. Feels good to play in a band to, with people who are willing to put the work in. And how how do I feel? It feels finally like this is the band that this was supposed. It was supposed to get to this. The things that have happened over the last six years with members coming and going have had to happen in order for us to get to this lineup of people who I genuinely feel care uh, as much as I do, which also had to be grown. Cause like I said, in the beginning I was very, I can contribute little. And now this band consumes me <laughs> the way that I want and allow, yeah. but because other members of the band do have things where they're, they're much more busy and they, you know, I'm fortunate that I'm in a place in my life where I'm able to reflect and, say I care more about my happiness and my happiness is how I judge my success. And with playing these songs and these with this band in the places we play, that is success for me. Even if, though there might not be the financial success that the outside world would say, well, where's the money? Um, I have to look past that because I feel good in my spirit and my soul when I'm walking off stage and someone tells me you don't understand that set helped me get through a very shit week well you just helped me get through my shit week by saying that thank you for saying that Damn. where do i think it will go we as a band have this dialogue often we are not stopping we are not slowing per se we have another record that is now finished another ep that is more even more so in the direction where we want to go musically um there is still some pop punk but there's also a lot of thrice a lot of thursday a lot of Ooh. heavier we i scream live as you know but on the recordings there's not really a lot of that and we've changed that with this next record we're moving in a direction of this is what our evolved sound is it's still fast it's still high energy Lyrically, it's even more honest than before, which Henry is a very honest oh, lyricist. You're, he you're, is, you're so right. He is a English person, English major -y person, where he uses words that I have to look up sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> He's a very overly literate person and super hyper intelligent man, soft, gentle man who has a lot of things that he is able to express in our lyrics, which sometimes the other members get to contribute a little bit here and there. And um, a lot of us get to relate to in some way. This next record that's coming out after Revival sometime next year is no, is even more so that, it's even more so that, it's even more honest than ever before. As survival was incredibly honest, yeah, um, and almost a story from beginning to end of of a crescendo of acceptance and 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 doing. And I think that as a band, we just the only thing that we need to do, as everyone has the, their lives, is fine tune a little bit. We just sort of fine tuning when we do things, where we do things, how we do things. So that it makes a little more sense and a little bit easier now that, as most people probably don't know, we all live in six different states. So being in six different states with Ricky being not even on the East Coast, he's in Colorado, it is harder to get together to do things. So we are doing what we can when we can and trying to tie a lot of things together. It requires a lot more planning and a lot more compromising, but so far, so good. What's next for Keep Flying? Shows, praying for support, playing to play to new people, new eyes, new ears. Revival is here, spending the rest of the year promoting Revival, having fun with it, coming up with funny bits, trying to use the TikTok, putting out another EP next year, and then also this year, starting to write what I believe will become our finally our first full-length record so i would think that next year you will see a keep flying ep that sets up 
the direction musically that we are, followed by hopefully end of year, a full length record or top of 24, a full length record. Because for some reason, there are still people that just can't take the music seriously if it's not a full length. I don't quite understand. Some of our EPs are eight tracks and full lengths are 10. <laughs> yep. So I don't really understand. But if you feel that, you got to give us the time because we are certainly, as you know, and as we said in this conversation, we are a band that likes to play our whole catalog. We're rehearsed in our whole catalog and we're not going to write a throwaway burner middle of the record song that we don't want to play. So you're going to just need to give us a little bit of more time to come up with that many songs that are all good because we don't want filler. We don't want waste and no rib at any of my friends. But a lot of my friends release full length records where I go, man, those three in the middle blue ass. What happened? <laughs> Why did you write that? Did you just write that? I did. I wish that you just made it eight songs instead. <laughs> I love the honesty. Uh, ju it, just try honesty, right? <laughs> it is what it is, man. A lot of records, and not it's not a new thing. This record's been coming out since the dawn of time. That you're like, man, forgot about those ones. That one sucks. Yeah, it's a bad song. Why did you put it on the record? Oh, we just had to. We had we needed it to be a 14, 14 track record. Okay. Well, man, it stinks that only eight of the songs are good. <laughs> no like, one wants to hear that backhanded compliment. No. Yeah, record's okay. I'd say ha which is a very common review of a lot of records. Yeah. Record's okay. Half the tracks are good, half get lost. Well, I wish that you would have just released the the half that were good. I don't, each their own, you know. Well, like I said earlier, and I'll say it again, Keep Flying is a band of and for the people uh, from the studio to the live stage and everywhere in between. John, honestly, I, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today. We'll have to do this again, especially as you uh, continue to move down and drop new music and play more shows and, and all of that. Um, but, John, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to add or say to the fans, the listeners of Spinning Thoughts out there? Obviously, Revival dropped August the 12th. And there is a lot to dive into and listen with that. But what are your final words here for the listeners of Spinning Thoughts? You said that long-winded was cool. <laughs> and sometimes after a question is done, I think to myself while you're talking about the next piece, I just went on such a tangent. I just gave so much extra info that I don't think was even needed. So I would like to apologize sometimes for the long-windedness. Though when someone messages us and says, I heard the thing on the thing, and it was really cool to learn this, I go, all right, maybe it's not so bad being long-winded sometimes. But No, long-winded is good. That's what I want, and you, you met that mark. Okay. Well, knowing that, I can't possibly think of anything else that could be said, <laughs> except... I'm, I would like to leave with this. Okay. <laughs> the Walking Dead is a show that I started live when it aired on TV. Halloween time, uh, like a decade ago. And I encourage and implore the listeners of this show to go back and either start for the first time or rewatch the now 11 and two thirds seasons of the show before the final eight episodes drops on uh, October of this year, because we are a band who take a lot of things, as you know, with movies and TV, a lot of samples, we're a sample band. And also we like to tie in things now, now with our merchandise as well, we do a lot of like, Right now, we're doing a whole Eddie Munson gimmick. I think that going into the full length, there will be something from that program and comic um, because it is something that I never stopped watching while everyone else bailed. <laughs> if, if you're someone who went back and watched the show Lost 
because you heard one of our prior interviews about walkabout in 2017 or 2018 and you were like wait a minute there's so much about this show involved in that record i'm gonna watch the show and then you hit me up after because this has happened about a dozen times you hit me up after to say oh my dude i heard the sample in the episode and and I, uh, suddenly the song meant meant more and clicked more to me that will be a big one i think on the full length and uh you know it was also a fun show if you're bored like a lot of people i know are <laughs> And you're looking for a new show? Maybe get going on The Walking Dead. Give it a shot. Okay. This is my pitch and my plead to everyone who has walked away from the program. It's coming to an end. I've heard you complain on the internet for years. It's coming to an end. Let us have this moment. Let us, the fans of The Walking Dead, have this moment. We only got eight episodes left. Rick is coming back. We want Rick. We want Michonne. Let us have this. <laughs> maybe, maybe between when this airs next week in August and October, you have the time to get through 11 and two thirds seasons of a show. <laughs> maybe you will join me in the viewing of the final episode live, which I believe is in like late November. Maybe you will join and we will uh, we will do it together. I, <laughs> I hope everybody hears that plea. And John, I can't thank you enough for being here. Now for the third time, keep flying, being on Spinning Thoughts. Uh, thank you so much, John. It truly was a pleasure. What shows are you watching? Right now? Current. Oh, boy. You know, I'm not a big TV guy, to be honest with you. I watch a lot of documentaries. I watch a lot of music-related shows. Horror. I'm big into horror. So, you know, I watch horror movies. But I guess I'm going to be watching 11 and two-thirds of The Walking Dead after this. Any streaming shows? Any streaming shows right now? Um, oh boy, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I can't think of any. Movies. Any recent movies? In, have you gone to the theater recently? I haven't gone to the theater, but the most recent horror movie that I saw was The Black Phone. It was really good. I'm, I'm, I still haven't seen it, but I've been told by everyone, as I'm also an avid horror fan, you must see this film. How yeah. do you not? It's good. It was It was definitely, I would recommend it to you as well. Have you ever seen Puppet Master? No. May I, as someone who is a horror person, recommend to you the original first Puppet Master, which was Full Moon Productions. Okay. It's bad. But, <laughs> but it will help you understand me as a person. Okay. Puppet Master. Full Moon, crap horror that they made about 40 movies, 40 sequels. Not actually. I think it's like 12, which is also too many. But check it out. We'll talk not on the show once you've seen the film. Okay. I will, I will hold to that commitment. I will meet you there. John, thank you so much for being here for episode 234 of Spinning Thoughts. Thank you for having us. My, I know my bandmates. Uh, and I can agree together, even though they're in there starting to wake up now, that we appreciate your show. We appreciate Spinning Thoughts, all of the um, work that you guys do, supporting us on the social media, the interview, uh, the review that we got recently. Adobe has been very kind to us always. We genuinely appreciate every opportunity that we get. And I know I made it a little silly at the end there, with my Walking Dead gimmick, but that's just so that when my guys hear this, they get pissed off. Because <laughs> they're, they're sick of hearing about it. Um, um, we genuinely appreciate every opportunity that we get. And not just from playing shows, but doing interviews and um, having anyone involved in any sort of media give a rat's ass about our band is very special for us. Because a lot don't. So the ones that do mean a lot to us. And I will say, I did remember you being very excited about getting a copy of the orange variant of survival. And it meant a lot to me. I remember saying in the group chat, I can't believe a few of these people care this much. It means a lot. It does mean a lot to all of us because some um, we're just shithead punk guys still trying to live a dream in our thirties and Dustin's 40. Um, and any way we get to do that, 
helps. And sometimes something like this might bring in another three people to a show. And that means that we did our work together, you and I. So I appreciate you very much. And I, I hope that you have a great rest of summer. And I look forward to listening to this back. Hell yeah. John, thank you so much. Safe travels on the road. And we'll catch up again soon. Talk soon, brother. Once again, I want to thank John from Keep Flying for being here for episode 234 of Spinning Thoughts. Make sure you go and check out Revival, the new EP from the band. They revisited a bunch of songs from their catalog, and I absolutely love what they did with it. And if you've never seen this band live, hell, if you have seen them live, you know you got to do it again. Get out there, find Keep Flying on tour. They're going crazy this fall with all kinds of live shows. Less Than Jake, Bowling for Soup, on their own, everywhere in between. I promise you, if you catch Keep Flying live at a show, you will not regret it. While you're doing all that, make sure you follow us on all social media at Spin Thoughts. Our website is thespinningthoughts.com, and we have premiere episodes every Thursday at midnight Eastern on Adobe Radio. Leave a like on this video if you're looking at this on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify or wherever you get podcasts, make sure you're subscribed. We'll be back again, same time, same place next week. Until then, make sure you share music, spread love. Oh,